and uh, bada bing, a bada boom. Okay, here we go. Next pair of shoes. One, two, three. And we're back, we're back everyone, back to the studio, back to Denver, uh, and yes, a new pair of shoes arrived. We're gonna open these up here in a minute. I resisted filming all day. Oh, it's hard, I don't like doing that. Uh, my camera and me, we're just like, I just love being creative all day long. But at the same time, I know that if you're watching this vlog, watching this video, you're probably here because you're intrigued to learn about how I dress during the cold, dark winter months. Uh, and listen, I get it. Some people are in Brazil. Some people are in uh, the Philippines. Some people are in Malaysia or uh, maybe Tanzania, wherever you're at. So some people don't have to deal with cold winter running, but I hope you stick around because uh, at the very least, who knows, maybe someday you will travel to a cold location and you can come back and watch this vlog at a later date. So what I'm getting at is uh, today is a simpler filming day and every now and then I do this just to uh, just to uh, I guess relax a little bit if I can put it that way okay and and I'm listening to all of you on Demore Global Running on Facebook it's absolutely unbelievable I think we're heading yeah let me just I think we're all we're at like 1.8 thousand uh, 1800 members of the Demore Global Running group on Facebook so it continues to grow very fast but a lot of the questions are about winter running gear. For example, I'm just gonna read a couple real quick. Uh, Angel asks, hi everyone. Okay, now that it's super dark for my after work runs, what would you recommend for a good head headlamp that isn't going to break the bank? That's from Angel. Uh, this is another one from Mike. The struggle is real. In Wisconsin, black ice on the roads, getting colder and more snow is on the way. Do I figure out how to survive the roads in cold versus become a gym rat? Uh, and do the dreadmill for the winter. What's smart? That is from Mike. So bottom line, I'm listening to all of you. And that's just a couple examples. We're talking lots and lots of questions about winter running gear. So hopefully I give a little insight right now. So that's what's going on. I've got notes here on my computer. We're gonna dive into it, talk about these shoes, open those shoes in a minute. Um, and I should say this upfront, I'm not necessarily endorsing uh, a particular company with respect to what I'm about to share, like there's so many different outerwear companies now. And outerwear is, you know, this gear that uh, you wear on your body to stay warm. Uh, there's just like, it's endless. Uh, so, but rather I wanna talk about how I go about putting the clothing on in order to stay warm, but not too warm, if that makes sense. So, because, oh my, oh my gosh, it's like, there's two, it's, in my humble opinion, I don't even know how you would begin to think about starting a new, outerwear company at this point because the, the market is so saturated. Um, all right, let's keep rolling here. Basically, I do not run on the treadmill or treadmills ever. I, I, last time I did it was uh, in June at a hotel I was at. I, it's been, and that was the first time in 10 years. I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it, but I get the purpose behind it at times in order to stay safe. For example, here in Denver, our winters are not crazy harsh. I don't live in Green Bay, Wisconsin, or Portland, Maine, or Oslo, uh, Norway, or, um, or St. Petersburg, Russia, or somewhere. It's like there are some really, really extreme winter conditions out there. So I understand that sometimes just for the sake of safety, you do need to run on a treadmill, but I do not do that. Um, so therefore, here in Denver, I wrote down some notes as to what I think about, and I just have to find it, what I think about when I'm going out for a run in the winter time, okay? And some of these are obvious, some of these might not be as obvious. So, of course, the daily decision, what am I gonna wear today? Temperature, the most obvious. Wind, oh, that's a big one. We can have some really tough spring weather here in Colorado, really windy conditions. Humidity levels, which we don't have humidity here in Colorado. Very, it's like very, very low. Uh, but that's a factor if you especially live on the near the ocean uh, cloud cover oh man here in denver we have 300 days of sunshine Shh, don't tell anyone don't tell anyone with 300 days of sunshine uh per year i should say so we get a lot of sun which impacts um what you're gonna wear because it could be it could be 15 10 degrees out here in denver with no wind and if it's bright sunshine 
you're, you're going to be okay. You're going to be totally, you're not going to get cold. The sun is just so intense uh, during the winter months. So cloud cover, uh, elevation gain. So how much elevation gain are you making in your run? And last one, or sorry, the water content of the snow. So that impacts how wet your feet are going to get. So is it a dry snow, like a champagne snow, or is it a slushy, wet, heavy snow? Okay, so I think about that. And then also lastly, my pace, which, so how fast are you running that day? Are you going fast? Are you going slow? Obviously, if you're going slow, you're probably wanna, you're gonna wanna dress a little warmer. So, uh, because when you're going fast, your, your body temperature heats up. And I'll just say this right now, um, everyone, everyone's bodies are different. So the temperature regulation is gonna vary. I like my mom, love my mom, but she gets cold at the snap of a finger. She does not like the cold at all. So she bundles up a ton, even if she's going out for a run, uh, like a ton, a ton. Whereas some people, they're walking around in 10 degree weather in shorts because, and they're just like, yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that cold, which I don't know if I believe it. But, um, so our bodies are different and we regulate the temperatures that we're experiencing differently as well. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about what to wear before going outside. Okay, let's dive in. So here we go. Get down to the, get down to the specifics here. Taking off my New York City Marathon jacket. I will put that, I'll put that right here. All right, so here we go. So we've got a long sleeve. My base layer is always a long sleeve. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. And preferably, and I wore it today, so it's actually in the laundry right now. I love, love the long sleeves that have a hole right here for your thumb. It just brings the sleeve a little further down your, your hand and your wrist. I love it. And mine is an, uh, it's actually an old school, it's an LL Bean. I was wearing it today. It's amazing. I've had it for, I've had it since high school. High school, that was 15 years ago and I'm still using it. And so like quality, quality, quality. If you buy something for 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, it might last you for a decade or two or three, who knows? Um, so anyway, I always have my base layer. Now, the dividing line for me is basically that 22 degree mark. Uh, between, I'll just say between 20 and 25 degrees. As far as, that's my decision point. And again, it'll vary for you as to whether or not I'm gonna, I'm gonna beef up how much clothing I'm wearing. So if it's below, let's say 22 degrees, I'll put a t-shirt on over my long sleeve in order to keep my core temperature a little warmer. All right, so here we go. Uh, bright green for you, and there you go. But if it's above, now I'll, now you have to think about the wind. You gotta think if it's, you know, uh, if it's snowing out, there's, there's other factors to consider. But um, if it's above 25 degrees, I will not put the t-shirt on, okay? And again, this is for me. And then on top of the long sleeve, the t-shirt, and of course, think about your pace for that day. I will have a windbreaker on. Now, um, this is a water resistant uh, wind, uh, jacket from Solomon, and I will link it down below, but it is not waterproof and it is not a jacket. It's not designed to um, necessarily keep you warm. It's designed to cut the wind. This is what's keeping me warm combined with the movement of going uh, out there into the elements and just building up uh, body temperature by moving. So this jacket, I love it because uh, you can't see it, but basically the, the, it wraps around your waist and really right down around your glutes and around your hamstrings. It, gets, it goes really low, so it keeps everything nice and warm um, all the way down to your upper legs. And there you have it. And then bada bing, a bada boom. So I'm gonna talk about my head in a minute. This is how I dress in the winter. Um, this is how I dress in the winter for my, my upper body. Moving on now to, um, I think I'll talk about my head. Okay, here we go. This is actually my favorite part. Oh, did I bring it out? Yes, I did. So I don't usually wear this hat, but it's again, one, all, all I could find at, in the moment. So I'll put a hat on, okay? Put a hat on, pretty basic there. Again, usually one that is uh, not as thick as this one. Um, I have a Saucony one right now. I like it a lot. Um, anyway, and then my favorite combo is the hat plus the buff. You better believe it. So right like that, bada bing, a bada boom. Can you still hear me? Uh-huh, just like that. Okay, and why do I love it? Why do I love this? The buff tucks into the coat so, so well, but at the same time, 
as you're going and the sun comes out or you're feeling good that day and you decide, ah, you know what, I'm a little too warm. Boom, take it off the ears and just keep it around the neck. And for all the doctors out there, uh, don't we lose a ton of heat through our neck? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think because the veins and the uh, veins, I don't know, the arteries, yeah, the arteries are so close to the skin that we lose a lot of heat, natural heat from our body temperature through our neck. So I still like to keep the buff on my neck even though my head is starting to get a little warm. Does that make sense? So, uh, but if it is cold, remember below that 22 degree mark, 20, 22 degree mark, I'll keep this on, bada bing, bada boom, and keep that up like that. My ears are, oh, it's, like, it's just such a, and um, a lot of hats, a lot of hats don't keep the wind out of your ear, right? So I just love, it just, it just hugs the face oh so well. And okay, I also add, a sun hat, yes, in the winter time, that's right. So let me just, now not necessarily this one, right, just like this, but I, the sun is really intense here in Colorado. So, uh, it's, and even in the winter, it'll hit the snow and then it'll reflect up onto your face. Uh, so once again, that is why I love the buff, because the buff, you can pull it up just to help protect your cheeks just a little bit, just like that, while still being able to breathe out of your mouth, out of your nose, just like that. And then, I didn't bring them out here, but my Smith sunglasses. So I've got a lot of coverage on my face with this combo. Um, and the hat just fits basically perfect right over this uh, winter hat plus the buff. All right, does that sound good? Okay, moving on to another part of the body is the hands. I struggle. In fact, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Can you help me? I have all sorts of different gloves and my hands are always too warm or too cold. I don't know what's going on. Uh, not always, I shouldn't say, but I struggle with my hands. I'm not even gonna talk about, I have, okay, I have one pair of gloves that work okay. They're, they're, it's, the company is Nofel, or Nofel, N-O-F-E, N-O-F-E-L, but I'm gonna lean into your expertise. How do you keep your hands warm in the winter, but not too warm? It's crazy. My hands are always a little crazy in the winter, so we're gonna move on from that. Um, what's next? Okay, legs, real quick. Um, where are they? Tights, yes. I always wear tights with boxer briefs. Yes, putting that out there. And these are my thicker options. I have a warm option, and then an like really warm, which is these, and then an option that is not as warm. Uh, but in addition, when the temperature definitely goes below that 20 degree mark, uh, compression sleeves on the calves and on the hamstrings, because I don't want to risk pulling a muscle out there in those frigid cold temperatures, okay? Uh, very rarely do I wear uh, like pants that are baggy in the winter time. It's always tights. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, legs are usually, legs are like the easiest thing to keep warm in the winter, in, in my opinion. Um, it's the feet, the hands, and the head that are the tough part. Okay, moving on real quick before we dive in. So uh, I actually forgot to mention this earlier. Yes, we had a bomb cyclone hit Denver last winter. Basically, I think it's where the temperature drops something like, or like the barometric pressure drops and the temperature drops in a 12 hour or, four, or 24 hour period, like extreme, it's crazy. And so we had one hit Denver last winter. And so yes, I wore, I actually went to the army surplus store and when it gets crazy out there, so I'm talking below zero, which I love, by the way, I love running in extreme temperatures because I think it gives me a little bit of a mental toughness. Like if you can run in below zero temperatures and be safe, um, I think you can apply that to other elements of this world where it's like, you know what? I got this. This isn't that crazy. Like, I, I don't know. That's how I approach running in the extreme temperatures. So when it gets, when it gets below zero and it's windy, I don't mess around. There it is. My full on mask. You better believe it kind of looked like a bank robber out there, but I don't care. And then I'll put my sunglasses on right over that. And then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, for my feet, uh, usually when it's below zero degrees, I don't run over 10 miles because, you know, got to be smart as well. No reason to be out there uh, in zero, below zero degrees Fahrenheit, I should mention, uh, for over 10 miles. But when I do, I wear these Polar Extreme socks. Here they are. And these are actually socks that hunters wear when they go out hunting. Uh, they're actually too warm for running, 
But if you're only going out for, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour, hour 15, they actually work well, but your feet actually start sweating almost too much in these. So you don't want to wear these for a long, long run. Uh, these are more for anything around below that hour mark or near that hour mark. Uh, so it's polar extreme. Love these socks for the below zero degree Fahrenheit days. And there it is in Celsius on your screen. Okay, as far as socks go, I love darn tough and smart wool socks. I don't have them out here, but darn tough, smart wool socks. I love the smart wool, the thicker option. I just think wool wicks away um, moisture so well in the winter time. Um, anyway, so those are the socks. And as far as shoes go, and we're gonna open this box in a minute, Solomon Speed Cross 5, there it is. I wore the, and now there's a GTX version. This is not the GTX, so a little Gore-Tex mixed in. Um, I don't know if I'll pick up the Gore-Tex before the Solomon Speed Cross 6 shows up on the marketplace. I cannot wait. Uh, but I love the Solomon Speed Cross 5. Look at those lugs, great for snow. Now, okay, I should mention, this is more for trail running in the winter, which I love, love, love doing. Uh, but also remember Mike on Facebook asked about running on black ice. Well, Mike, um, you might wanna consider getting, now these are a little extreme. It sounds like you live on roads. Um, it just depends on the snow and the, the thickness of the snow and the ice, but uh, this is the Innovate Arctic Claw 300 with micro spikes built into the outsole. Now the lug depth might be too much for an urban environment. But if you live in an urban environment that is just completely covered with snow, like I'm thinking Calgary or um, where I get, you know, like not like Chicago, but like places that are truly Minneapolis, uh, like really, really snowy and the snow doesn't go away. Uh, upstate, like, uh, uh, like Vermont or somewhere like we're in Europe, I guess uh, Sweden, some places in Sweden, like I would absolutely wear this shoe all the time in the winter with thick socks. And even if I was in a city, I don't care. Like I would use the lugs to my advantage, running, just plowing through the snow, not caring, not having a care in the world that I was gonna fall because I, was, I would trust the lug depth with the micro spike. So I really enjoy the Innovate Arctic Claw 300. Uh, I look forward to taking these out actually very soon now that the snow is back. Okay, shall we open this box? Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. What a day, what a day. Okay, as I'm opening this here with the trusty knife, uh, question of the day, winter running gear tips. What tips do you have for this YouTube family, this growing YouTube family, uh, for staying warm in the winter time, but not too warm, okay? Like, and I, listen, Denver is not an extreme winter place. There are so many other places around the world where we gotta lean into your experience. Help us. Um, I'm doing. I, I'm. Tr I'm trying to communicate what I've learned, you know, over the years. But I know there's so much more experience out there that you just have to. If you want to run all year long, um, you have to be really, really dialed into your gear in the winter time. So thank you for uh, answering that question of the day down below. And uh, bada bing, a bada boom. Okay, here we go. Next pair of shoes. One, two, three, there it is. Uh-oh, Ultra in the house. The Lone Peak 4.5s. Bada bing, a bada boom. Oh, wow, lost one, hold on. Oh my goodness, they're black. They're black, everyone. Who is an Ultra Lone, uh, Lone Peak fan out there? Wow, oh my. So as you know, Ultra is, um, is a company zero drop shoe and uh, I am excited. So I'm not a huge ultra guy, just gonna say that right now, but I do see the benefit of, of zero drop for recovery days especially. That's how I use ultra running shoes and this is epic. So the reason this connects to winter running is because the lug depth is there, but not it, it's not, cr I'm just looking at it right now, it's not crazy extreme. I'm excited, who knows? Maybe we will take these out tomorrow. How does that sound? Oh man, that's interesting that they're black. I must say, it kind of caught, it catches me off guard. Um, I kind of like it. It's kind of got that, I don't know, no, no nonsense look to it, so that's pretty cool. And yes, there is a rock plate in this Ultra Lone Peak 4.5. 
Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. I know that was a lot on winter running gear, but I hope you gained just a little bit of insight as to the rationale and questions that I ask myself when I'm about to go out the door in the cold, dark winter months, which are knocking on all of our doors in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, which I can't wait to see you next week down in Argentina, I guess you're transitioning to summer. But um, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. All right, we're going to toss it back to the bomb cyclone vlog on the right. And yes, we're going to throw it on the left to the Innovate Arctic Claw ice test where I take the micro spikes out to ice and just see if I can fall. You have to watch to see if I do. All right. Love you all. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.